Hello, I'm Masoho and I'm an Ngami land, Botswana. I'm here on a plant hunt. Botswana is a lovely country with unusual plants and lots of animals. Plants here in Botswana are unusual and you can see them for miles and miles. What's really interesting is that plants are able to grow and produce new baby plants in different places. For example, we've got this one here, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here. So how does all this happen? Flowering plants make new young plants by producing seeds. The seeds often end up a long way from the parent plant. When living things change and grow, this is called a life cycle. For a plant, this begins with the seed. Some plants produce lots of seeds, don't they, Lily? They have to, because not all of them will manage to grow into new plants. Some seeds will die. They won't be able to germinate if they don't have warmth and water. Germinating is when they start to grow, isn't it? Uh, yes, Ash. There are so many different types of seed. They vary just as much as animals do. But they will never turn into plants if they can't germinate. If a seed has everything it needs, that is space, warmth, oxygen and water, then it can start to grow or germinate from the soil. Let's see what happens next. Here's a young plant. First, it develops roots which grow deep down into the soil. It then develops a shoot which grows upward through the soil. The shoot later becomes the stem and then finally it will develop leaves and later flowers. Flowers have pollen or eggs inside them. If the pollen gets moved from one flower to another flower of the same kind by wind or animals, then the egg becomes fertilized. The flower then develops into a fruit with seeds inside. The fruit protects the seed while it grows inside it. Once it's ready to be released, the seed may be carried away for miles and miles by water, wind, animals, or even human beings. This is called seed dispersal. Let's now take a look at how other different seeds are dispersed. So let me get this straight. A seed germinates and a root grows followed by a shoot which grows and grows forming the plant's stem, leaves, flowers and fruits. And the fruit have new seeds inside. Yes, and then the seeds are carried away. Uh, how are these seeds carried away? The seeds of this particular plant are carried just like that, Ash. With the wind. Seeds come in different shapes and sizes. You get ones like this, which have wings here on the side and can be easily blown away. You get ones as small as grains of sands, and you can even get ones from the baobab tree, which you see behind us here, which are shaped like this. Tiny seeds are able to be dispersed by the wind with the help of the feathery hairs they have on them. But larger wind dispersed seeds like these can easily be carried away by the wind with the help of these wings on the side and land like a parachute. When you see plants growing near water or in water, the seeds usually have a spongy case. The case helps the seeds float in the water and carry them to new places. If you don't think your seeds are carried by wind or water, they may be dispersed by animals. Some plants, like this one here, the seeds have hooks on them. Some, like the plant here, the seeds are sticky. When fairy animals walk by, or even plant hunters like myself, these seeds stick onto the animal coat or even my socks. Animals carry these seeds far away where they eventually drop off. Some fruit is very, very tasty. 
and these animals eat the fruit, the seeds eventually come out in animal droppings far away from the parent plant. It doesn't really matter how the seed is carried. If it has everything it needs, wherever it lands, it'll start to germinate and a new plant will form again. Then the life cycle of a plant will begin. That is so amazing. Seeds will keep spreading and plants will keep growing in lots of new places. I have a question for you, Ash. Which happens first, the plant or the seed? The plant. Oh, no, no. But that would have to come from a seed. Oh, no. But, but the plant produces the seed. Oh, that's not fair, Lily. Germination and seed dispersal are part of a plant cycle. There is no beginning or end. It just goes round and round. quite easy to collect seeds. All you have to do is to pick them off the plant and put them into the bag. Collecting seeds is best done just before the fruit is about to release the seeds. If however it's difficult to pick the fruit or the seeds from the plant then you are probably a bit too early and need to come back later. I've really had a great day looking at seeds and how different they all are. Next time I see a rare plant in two different places, I will definitely look at the seed and try and discover how it got there. You can also really help us with this. See if you can see how different seeds travel from one place to another. And when you do it, remember to note down what the seed looks like, as well as where the plant is growing. This helps you learn and work out what it needs to germinate. The Millennium Seed Bank at Kew needs your help to discover how far plants have traveled. Maybe the plant that you find could have traveled from a very far away place to come and grow near where you are.